Joker Year One is coming to its finale. Batman and Joker are currently being kept in a cell by Batman's own evil persona. While in this cell, Joker told Batman that he would explain how he knows about Zora Noir and the history of the Joker. That brings us to Joker Year One. After the Red Hood gang left Joker for dead, he discovered that he was terrified of Batman. This led Batman's original mentor to seek out Joker and teach him a few things to get back at Batman. He taught Joker how to compartmentalize three personalities, three Jokers, so that he could be the most vicious he's ever been. No longer afraid, Joker went out for revenge on the Red Hood gang and Batman. This is Comic Story, and I take comic books, turn them into audio drama so that you know what is going on in the world of comics, so you know what to add to your collection. And today we're going to be covering Batman issue 144. If you want even more comics dramatically read to you, check out our YouTube memberships or our Patreon, as we are putting up almost double the amount of books over there, waiting for room in the YouTube algorithm to release them here. Laughter echoes through the abandoned halls of the GCPD as the infected Bat family stalks forward. They were Batman's family, and he didn't want to hurt them. So he turned. He ran. He threw every smoke pellet that he had at his disposal, and he fled from the holding cells. They were some of the deadliest people on the Earth, but the infection changed them. Batman allowed them to chase him outside, but he had already hidden in the shadows. Moments pass as Batman crouches, but the infected don't return. Alone again, he turns and ascends the GCPD but he's still being stalked by death. The Joker quietly follows up behind him, his red robes dragged on the ground behind him. But we cut to the past where this story began. Bruce Wayne is holding a gala to support Gotham's opera. He pulls himself away from several potential donors as Alfred holds up a special phone. Bruce takes the call and once again drops his voice. Jim, so far the Red Hood gang hasn't taken the bait. They have a history with Bruce Wayne, so I'm still hopeful. Batman says, and Jim nods, relaying that he is heading back to the GCPD to keep an eye on Manny, who just had a major drug bust. Are you certain he's a member of the Red Hood gang? Batman asks. In his car, Jim nods. He murdered a fellow member of the GCPD before they could rat him out. So yeah, he's one of them. I'm gonna head in and keep an eye on him, Jim says as he steps out into the rain. Hanging up the phone, Bruce sighs. Sir? Are you perhaps needed elsewhere? Alfred asks him, and Bruce shakes his head. He's using the socialites as bait and wouldn't feel comfortable leaving them alone if the Red Hood gang shows up. Inside, Gordon walks by the front desk sergeant, explaining that he needs to collect some things from his desk. He walks by another officer who's taking a statement from a frowning clown, who keeps explaining that the kids are tormenting him. His complaints are really just thinly veiled jokes. Inside the evidence vault, Manny and his compatriots are still proud of their drug bust. Last chance to take a bump before I weigh it in, the officer on duty says, but Manny shakes his head. Nah, I want to be level-headed when I take it all. Manny hisses. One of the other members holds up a stun gun, shocking the officer, sending him to the ground. Let's get this party started, Manny says as everyone begins to pull on red hoods. He smiles, tapping a button on his phone, shutting down all of the security cameras in the precinct. In the hall, Gordon notices the camera go dark. He pushes into the security office and sees that everything is shut down. He reaches out, tapping a few buttons, but is interrupted as the door swings open and a Red Hood gang member opens fire on him. In the main bullpen, the Red Hood gang floods in, keeping the cops at gunpoint and ordering them all to hit the floor. One pistol whips the clown, sending him down. From his office, the commissioner angrily gets to his feet. Damn it, Manny! You were supposed to wait until I was out! He grumbles, but he reaches for the gun on his desk, and that's when he's shocked to find a note from Batman. I know everything, it says. In the security office, Red Hood is wrestling with the Red Hood gang member. You just can't let go, can you? The Red Hood shouts. Gordon, ignoring the wound in his shoulder, wraps an arm around the man's throat. Danny, is that you? You don't have to. Gordon shouts, the gun thundering in the small room and the Red Hood member dropping to the ground. Gordon stumbles against the wall, now covered in blood that isn't his. I'm so sorry. While Manny and the others load the drugs into their van, the other Red Hood members are keeping the hostages calm. But that clown, that creepy little clown from before, he begins to laugh, releasing the balloons that he was holding, letting them float to the ceiling. Outside, the commissioner is joining his men on the loading docks, but Gordon has caught up to them. Drop it, he shouts, raising his captured pistol. 
Upstairs, the balloons hit the ceiling and they detonate, filling the bullpen with smoke and fire. As the smoke swirls around the room, the hoods turn in shock to see Joker rising from the floor. Now armed with a rifle and grenades, he laughs as he begins to toss them. The explosion rocking through the GCPD, causing Gordon to become distracted long enough for the commissioner to bring up a pistol and fire. But back in our future storyline, the world in which the Joker has overrun everyone with an infection of laughter, Batman moves through the shadow of the GCPD, his flashlight falling on pictures of past commissioners. And he stops at Commissioner McLeod. You see, they had learned that he was the second leader of the Red Hood gang, and he disappeared shortly after his release from prison. Batman moves through the building, trying to find clues to what the Joker led him here for, but something moves behind him in the shadows. Red Hood steps forward, a smile on his face as he laughs. He was the third Red Hood. Once again affected by the Joker, Batman refuses to hurt his son again, whirling around Jason, wrapping an arm around his throat and injecting him with a sedative. Jason falls quietly to the floor. Opening up the filing cabinets, Batman pulls a file on McLeod. Inside, he finds a laughing box. Why don't you open it? My little parting gift to you, Bruce. Joker wheezes as he steps out of the shadows, activating the box and sending a sonic pulse that calls forth a bat. The creature bursts through the window and lands on the desk. I could have killed you at any point over the years. You know that, don't you? You lived because I let you live. Because I love you. The Joker whispers. Batman turns, glaring at him. You lived because I let you, even though I hate you. Now we go to the past to wrap up our story of the Red Hood Gang. Manny shouts for the commissioner and the others to leave, but the commissioner refuses, moving to chase after Gordon. He storms onto the loading dock where Gordon is waiting. Stop! Drop the gun! Gordon snaps. McLeod smiles, lowering his weapon, pointing out to Gordon that he is the only one who knows the truth about the Red Hood gang. You're the only one who knows I was leading the gang. Half the cops are with me. Surveillance is shut down. You got nothing, Gordon! We're gonna waltz back in on Monday morning like nothing happened. Commissioner McLeod tells him smugly, but Gordon shakes his head, pointing up. The cameras. I turned them back on. McLeod bellows with rage, rushing Gordon, knocking the gun aside as it thunders in the confined space. Manny and the others speed away in their van, unaware that one of the bags of drugs is ticking. It suddenly explodes, filling the van with a strange gas. At the loading dock, the commissioner and Gordon trade blows back and forth, staggering back into the bullpen where they are surprised by the carnage. Where do you think you're going? There's nowhere to hide. McLeod says as he follows Gordon, but James nods, preparing himself. I just wanted the rest of them to see me kick your ass, he grunts, and Mick Lode rushes forward, but Gordon is prepared. He blocks the first blow and hits the commissioner hard, knocking him to the ground. Standing over the dirty cop, Gordon promises that he's going to clean up the city. But later, Manny wakes up in a strange mirror funhouse. Hello, Manny! Good news! My antidote worked! The bad news! I just didn't have enough time to give it to the rest of your crew! <laughs> The Joker laughs from somewhere. Fear grips Manny as he tries to make his way out of the funhouse, only to stumble on Benny, number 22. A vicious smile pulled across his face. Red Hood 22, nice guy, but I really needed someone to test my toxin on. Joker says, so Manny continues to run, while Joker promises to keep experimenting on the Red Hood gang, especially McLeod, when he gets out of jail. Manny tries a mirror door, but Joker kicks through it, sending him to the ground. Manny looks up in fear as the Joker steps through the broken glass, a large knife in his hand. Don't worry! I'm not going to do any experiments on you, I'm just going to have some fun! He says before filling the funhouse with laughter. Back in the future, Batman has figured out the cure for the infection. The screeches of bats counter the laughing disease. The clue that Joker gave him. He leads the bats through the streets, allowing their cries to cure Gotham City of the Joker disease. And the Joker himself has disappeared again. But as the sun comes over the horizon, Gotham is saved. 
Batman returns to the manor where he finds Selina Kyle waiting for him. But he knows that he only saved the city because the Joker allowed him to. And he wonders, all these years, could the Joker have simply won? And that concludes Joker Year One. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about this story. It's not terrible, but in the context of this giving us answers to Zer and R, I'm completely lost. So we're going to have to see what happens in the next issue. And if you're just as clueless as I am, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you here soon.